I'd like to start by just you telling us what is the, 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 the primary ideology or primary ideas that fuel Gorgoroth, Gorgoroth's music. A few moments later. One hour later. Two hours later. Three hours later. Six and a half hours later. The next day. Three days later. Three weeks later. Many months later. Two thousand years later. One eternity later. A few inches later. Satan. When it comes to classic black metal bands, Gorgoroth is always thrown around, but no one ever really names an album from them. And I'm here to tell you that this band is kind of overrated and underrated. Where the classic material, the stuff that I really like, I think is a little underrated. Not many people talk about it as much. But the most famous era from this band, I think, is not nearly as good. But regardless who was on vocals or who was dominating the songwriting, it is undisputed that no matter what, this band put on one hell of a live performance and created some of the most awesome black metal albums ever, and even some of the worst. But all in all, this band is at its absolute best when it's being led by the original founding member and guitarist in Furnace, and not when it's being led by a poser that tries to make black metal a silly joke in one of Sam Dunn's shitty documentaries. Satan. But what a perfect marriage that was. Gaul's claim to being gay is about as slippery as Sam Dunn's metal family trees. So we start with Pentagram, an album that starts a trilogy of perfect black metal releases. And this album is easily one of the best. My only problem being that the album has an instrumental, and I always hate it when black metal bands do instrumentals, but it's an okay instrumental. It's short, it's almost two minutes, the riffs are kind of cool, it's just pointless. I'd rather hear vocals. And speaking of vocals, the vocalist does a damn good job on this album. A guy by the name of Hat does vocals on this shit. Even though he has a retarded name, he really, really, really delivers on this album. The riffs, the songs, they're all fucking fantastic, and the production is on point. One of the best black metal productions ever. I can't decide my favorites on here. There's really great doomy moments like Ritual, but I also really like the memorable, repetitive Catharnas Bort, Catharnas Bort Gang. What a kick-ass song that one is. And this album laid the groundwork of what Gorgoroth and black metal itself should be. Quick to the point, 29 minutes in length, a pretty great production that's also lo-fi, fantastic vocals, and very memorable, fantastic riffs delivered by our Lord and Savior in Furnace.
Now, Antichrist is very weird because it's considered an album and an EP. It's only 25 minutes, but I consider it an album. And there's technically only five songs in here, but the songs that are on here are pretty fucking fantastic. Sorg is great and different. They even have a title track to the band Gorgroth. My favorite is the blistering, creepy riffage of Possessed by Satan. Once again, though, we have another pointless black metal instrumental, this one being even longer, and I dislike it even more, but it doesn't really ruin the album. The main songs are fantastic, but they could have wrote more songs. They could have ditched the instrumentals. Honestly, it's good, but it's not as good as Pentagram. What's funny is there's actually some notable lineup changes on this album. Infernus got the drummer from that shitty, overrated black metal band Satyricon, Frost. And Hat only did vocals on three songs in this album, for Mountain Trolls Revenge, for Gorgoroth, and for Sorg, or also known as Sorrow. But he actually got a new vocalist that would actually end up doing pretty much everything on the next album, a guy that's even better than Hat, a dude that has a ridiculous black metal vocal style that does the song Possessed by Satan, a guy by the name of Pest. And in my opinion, he's probably the best vocalist this band has ever had, and easily one of the best black metal vocalists ever. His screams are wretched and disgusting. Under the Sign of Hell is easily my favorite album from the band and one of my favorite black metal albums of all time. They fine tune the production, the performances, everything. The songs that are typical blistering black metal are better than anything they've ever done and more memorable. There's more melody, there's more different ideas being thrown in. There's some crazy ideas in here. The last song, The Devil is Calling, is very weird. It's very doomy, very droning with some very wretched vocals on top of it. And we're talking about different, how about Perfentus Eben Baring? What a weird song. They actually has Pest doing clean vocals on it. It sounds like some weird Nordic chanting. Honestly, the only negative thing I have to say about this album is the fact that they re-recorded it for no reason later down the road. Fuck album re-recordings. But other than that, everything about this album is perfect. An essential, essential album. Easily the best thing they've ever done. Destroyer is a very odd album. The artwork looks really weird. It's like a weird black and white close-up of a destroyer ship. The title is very weird. It's called Destroyer or about how to philosophize with a hammer. Yeah, I'd rather just call it Destroyer, thank you. And then Furnace is even trying to get a new vocalist in on this album. I don't know why he just didn't keep Pest, because Pest is fucking awesome. He looks like a goddamn psycho. But on the first song in this album, Destroyer, Furnace is trying to push a new vocalist on us by the name of Gaul. A guy that would end up trying to ruin this band, so in hindsight, he should have definitely stayed with Pest. But you can tell just from the credits on this album that making this was a complete mess. Members only did stuff on certain tracks, vocals on certain tracks, drums on certain tracks, even guitars on certain tracks. What the fuck was going on? And Furnace even did vocals on Blood Offering and the Dark Throne cover of Slotet I De I, d I, th I can't even fucking remember what that shit is in English. But they did a cover of that for no reason. And the song that I just mentioned that he did vocals on Blood Offering is really, really bad. The only really terrible moment on this whole album. If it didn't have that, and if they maybe put another song other than the Dark Throne cover, because I'm not a big fan of covers, you would have had another really, really great album. But you can tell that making this was a huge mess. <laughs> Now we get to the Gaul era of the band with Incepit Satan. Now, this is easily my least favorite era of the band. These three albums I think have shitty modern production. I can't stand Gaul. 
at all personally or his vocal style it just kind of annoys me but i will say this album is okay it definitely starts sucking the second half of it but the first half is actually some pretty damn good songs and beginning the shitty half of the album you actually have another song that infernus does vocals on an excerpt of x too bad that the song fucking sucks even though there are good moments it's very very uninspired just like any other album in this era and on this album Infernus also tries to push another band member down our throats a new bass player that he got a notorious dickhead by the name of king of hell who along with gall would try to take over this band during the next two albums that is one big pile of shit Twilight of the Idols is easily my least favorite album from the band. It is complete shit. The only songs I like are Procreating Satan, the first song. And then there's some okay moments later down the road of Ice and Movement's kind of okay. Blood, Og, Mine is pretty cool. But God, the rest of it is just pure, pure torture. Terrible production, terrible performances, terrible vocals. And the music is complete shit. And Furnace doesn't even write anything. It's mostly King of Hell. And the stuff he writes is garbage. In fact, really, the only tolerable songs on this album are the ones that the drummer, whose name I can't pronounce to save my life, wrote. That is one big pile of shit. And we get another shitty album. Honestly though, I think this one's maybe a little bit better than Twilight of the Idols. There's three pretty good songs at the beginning. Carving a Giant's classic. God see Twilight of the Idols pretty good. Wound Upon Wound's cool. And there's some okay moments later on their own. But honestly, another album that's not that good. And it is completely taken over by King of Hell and Gaul at this point. In fact, they were even trying to push out Infernus from his own band, which is fucked up. Because he was the one that was making those classic early albums to begin with. He was the most important part of their sound. I mean, I get it if he's hard to work with. It kind of makes sense considering how disorganized the writing credits and musicianship credits on those first couple albums are. But good God, he, it's his band, guys. He's the most important member, easily. And one last thing I do want to say before Gaul gets shit-canned from this band, finally, and we get to talk about some really good material again, I do want to say I find it really annoying how big of a poser Gaul is. Now, I hate using the word poser, but this guy is always extremely, extremely cringy. I mean, it's maybe he has, like, autism or something, but... He's always trying to say like the most edgy things humanly possible, like, oh, I love the church burnings, and oh, it is perfect, and blah, 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 as he's there sipping wine and trying to look all creepy and say, my main inspiration for my music is Satan. <laughs> but what really annoys me is how he was trying to tell people that he was a homosexual. But then later down the road when people pushed him on that, he says, I don't know what I am. It's like motherfucker it honestly just seems like he's saying whatever would make it look as edgy as humanly possible i bet the motherfucker acts normally otherwise nah i'm just kidding he was actually sentenced to one year in prison for beating the shit out of some guy at a party and literally collecting his blood in a cup and telling him i'm going to sacrifice you i'm going to drink your blood now do you guys see why i call black metal autistic metal and furnace was actually trying to write material again around 2006 but while writing the material for this, he actually had to serve a prison sentence for gross negligent rape. So now that he was isolated and actually writing material, we know that this band was going to actually have a great fucking album again. But then, Gaul and King of Hell attempted to actually kick Infernus out and then claim Gorgoroth as their own band. But Infernus rightfully claimed the name to this band because it does belong to him. Gaul and King of Hell got shit canned, rightfully so, and Furness was back to writing the music and wrote every single song on the album, and he got the badass pest back on vocals, making this maybe my second favorite from them. Ah, goddamn, I don't know. I'd say it's up there with Pentagram. 
or even up there with Under the Sign of Hell. The material in this is fantastic all the way through. Every song is amazing. Building a man, cleansing fire, prayer, it's all fucking amazing material. And even though it's new, even though it has a slightly modern production, it sounds like it fits in perfectly with the good old material, like it just came straight off the heels of Destroyer. It's so good it almost rewrites the entire Gaul era, making it non-existent and replacing it with this fantastic fucking album. Now, Gorgoroth's last album, released in 2015, Instinctus Bestalius, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is actually very, very, very good. Even though, for some reason, he kicked out Pest, because you could tell Infernus has some, probably some fucking ego issues right there. He did get a very good vocalist by the name of Atteringer, or something like that. Atteringer, whatever the fuck. But he's not Pest, so I'm kind of a little disappointed. And it's not a continuation of the classic style. It's actually very different. A lot of this album is very mid-paced, a little bit slower tempo. And they're going in a more creative, different direction, which I do like that. It's a very, very good album front to back. I love every song. And I, in fact, I kind of like it a little bit more than even some of the classic material like Destroyer or Antichrist. It's one of the best albums they've ever released. It's some really good material. My favorite is the song Rage, easily one of the best songs they've ever done. It's super epic and it's super amazingly catchy. So that's it for Gorgoroth. Hopefully Infernus can get rid of the terrible taste left in our mouths from the Gaul era. Instead, people will remember Gorgoroth for the great material and will remember the band for Infernus and his great work in this band and the other members that contributed to those early albums and these two new albums and forget the terrible retarded poser that tries to make black metal look like a goddamn joke. My only want is that Infernus can get that crazy motherfucker passed back on vocals and do another crazy black metal album. But if they continue in this direction, I'd be okay with it as well. Subscribe to the Downfall Network.